Welcome back. You're watching Solon tonight. Our top stories this Thursday evening. Calls for pedestrian crossing at Gunville after 12-year-old girl is knocked down. And police arrest trio over cold calling in Sandown and alleged fraud by false misrepresentation. Sport and in ice hockey, the new man with the task of transforming, transforming the White Link Raiders into a winning team believes his first two import signings for the new season proves that progress is being made at Ryde Arena. Head coach Les Milley completed a deal so 23-year-old forward Robert Frank from Slovakia could join the Raiders over the bank holiday weekend. He's been the top scorer at each of his last four clubs. Also coming from Slovakia is 21-year-old defenceman Milan Kabat, who's described as a no-nonsense defender with great offensive capabilities. Head coach Milley also says he's at the advanced stages of negotiations with more players and hopes to have them tied up by the end of this week. He's told Solin TV the Raiders will be a match for any team this season despite limited amounts of money. Uh, there's been a couple of occasions already this year that I've, I've spoken to a couple of guys but unfortunately we couldn't match other clubs' wages which is going to happen. Uh, there are clubs out there that are just throwing some crazy money about at the moment and that's something that I'm not willing to put the club under jeopardy financial wise. So we'll have to look at the guys that I know that are going to be good, sound, st stable guys that are going to be able to do the job that I want them to do. and. Uh, We'll get there eventually. I've got a few more guys on the boil at the moment that I'm speaking to and I'm pretty confident I can get those guys tied up and signed up, which will make it a quite interesting team. Are you able to say any more at the moment about which members of the current squad will be coming back next year or whether any of them have been definitely released already? Um, nobody's been released as such yet. I am still speaking to guys. Uh, we've had initial conversations with a few of the guys. I've made a few offers to the certain individuals I want to keep back on the island and... Uh, Obviously, the ball's in their court now whether they want to actually come back and play with the Raiders or not. Um, I ain't playing a game where we're going to be obviously battering over money or anything like that. It's going to be a pure simple, this is the contract I'm offering you. If you don't like it, then go elsewhere. Three teenage footballers from the Isle of Wight have achieved success with their Hampshire FA team who beat Cornwall to win the South West Counties Under-18s Championship. Braiding down goalkeeper Simon Moore and Cow Sports defender Simon Williams played in the deciding match on Saturday when Hampshire scored a 2-0 victory away to Cornwall's Under-18s. Cow Sports goalkeeper Ollie Fool James didn't play in the final game but is a member of this season's victorious squad. A team of rugby union players from the island are putting their efforts into helping some of the poorest children in Europe. The Isle of Wight Rugby Football Club has just returned from a tour of Poland where it raised £1,500 for underprivileged youngsters in the capital city, Warsaw. The island team lost in a final but picked up two awards for fair play and best touring side. The two men in charge at Newport Football Club have announced they want to step down from their jobs as directors. Ian Brown and Pete Fry are due to leave nearly a year after taking over the financially troubled team. Newport ended the season last week by losing to Cal Sports in the Isle of Wight Gold Cup final, but the Port avoided relegation from the Southern League. At a meeting this week, supporters decided the first team should stay at that level, despite the suggestion of a voluntary drop down to the Wessex League because of the club's limited budget. Speaking to Sterling TV this afternoon, director Ian Brown said he and Pete Fry had invested more than £50,000 this season to put Newport Football Club on a sound financial footing. The pair, who run a business in Portsmouth, say they don't have the time or enthusiasm to remain as directors and will step down as soon as successors are appointed. Newport's first team manager, Hugh Lewis, hasn't made a decision yet about what he'll do next, but speaking after last Thursday's Gold Cup final, Lewis told Solent TV about how difficult life at St George's Park had been this season. Um, I don't think until you've managed Newport Football Club, you have any idea, I don't mean, you know, I mean anybody, um, of the, the, the scale of, of the public eye about the club. There's, there's more interest in what goes on at our club rightly or wrongly than there is on the other clubs and um, I think our forefathers have a lot to answer for because not only financially did they basically bugger the club up um, but it's an, a very unpopular club in general on the island with, with neutrals and um, that they've got to look back to their past for that and then the arrogance and the conceited way they've done things and the way they've treated people badly and uh, it's, it's a difficult club to manage and it's uh, you don't get any thanks for it uh, all you get is criticism and it's, it's, it's a tough it's a tough club to manage but at the end of the day it, it is the, the biggest club on the island at this moment in time and uh, it's been a pleasure it's been a pleasure to manage them but if the directors want you back you would like to come back 
I've, I've got to talk to them and find out what what situation is and on what under what conditions uh, we, we we're going to move this club forward. I'm, I'm I'm not somebody that likes to stand still, and if if we're going to move forward as a football club, then I want to be the man to take the club forward. Um, and and I, until I've sat down and chatted with them, I, I really don't know where where we'll be. A prestigious National Sports Award has been won by a club on the Isle of Wight. Ride Rowing Club is celebrating after being named Sports Club of the Year by the Central Council of Physical Recreation. The honour was announced on Tuesday during a ceremony at the Grange City Hotel in London where VIP guests included World Cup winning footballer Sir Bobby Charlton and the Minister of Sport Richard Caborn MP. Ride Rowing Club also receives a top prize of £6,000. Now, promoters of the Bestival Music Festival at Robin Hill Country Park say they expect the event to sell out tomorrow as there's only 200 tickets remaining. It's a record sellout for the festival, which has quickly grown to be regarded as one of the best festivals of its size in the country. Curator and Radio 1 DJ Rob DeBank has been holding the event for four years, with this year's headliners including Beastie Boys, Primal Scream and the Chemical Brothers. Organisers say they expect the tickets to be gone by lunchtime, with around 100 still available uh, directly from Robin Hill or Newport's tourist office. The theme for the Fancy Dress Parade is being announced on Monday via a special podcast poem on the Sunday Best website. Now it's Thursday and time to take a quick look at some of the activities taking place across the island over the weekend. If you're looking for something to do, there could be something for you in the guide. Tonight is request night at the Memorial Hall Freshwater where the Unity Stompers Jazz Band invite their audience to choose the programme which starts at 8pm. Tomorrow night at the Liquid Lounge <coughs> in Union Street Ride it's DJ Party Night and this is billed as Bingo, Bango and the Bongo Squad. On Saturday evening at Medina Theatre it's the turn of the Isle of Wight Music Centre Wind and Brass Bands together with the Isle of Wight Youth Choir and the Isle of Wight Youth Band to perform a spring concert starting at 7pm. Next Wednesday, also at Medina Theatre, starting at 7.30pm, the Mugenkyo Taiko Drummers will take part in a, a spectacle of thundering rhythm, dramatic choreography and high energy. And finally, also next Wednesday, Take the Space perform a thrilling play about the island's scientific genius Robert Hook, entitled Hanging Hook. And that's at the Key Arts Theatre starting at 8 pm. Now, the weekly political debate show Extra Extra is on tonight, right after the news at 7.30 pm, discussing issues that matter to you here on the Isle of Wight. Paul Topping returns to the hot seat tonight and is in the Extra Extra studio now to let us know more about who's on tonight's panel, Paul. Thanks, Chris. Uh, on this week's panel, we have Ken Pearson representing Labour, Bob Blezard from the Lib Dems, Councillor David Pugh from the Ruling Conservative Administration and Richard Priest from the Riverside Centre. We're talking safer island roads, more reaction to the education plans and whether a trip to the US by top-level councillors is really any use to the rest of us left behind. Plus, of course, your questions to the panel. It's your weekly dose of political debate right here on Silent TV Extra Extra in just a few minutes' time. Please join us then. And as ever, if you're watching a late version of tonight's news, you can see that programme when it's repeated tomorrow at 10am and 10pm and on Saturday evening at 7.30. Now, time is running out to enter our latest family competition. You could win free tickets to take the kids on a great day out to Brookfield's horse country outside, on the outskirts of Ride. All you have to do is put your thinking caps on and help them out with the naming of the latest miniature Shetland that's been born there. Here's Michael with the detail. All we need you to do is send in your boy's name to competition at solent.tv. Perhaps you'd like to send us one of your drawings as well. You can also write to us 11 ABC Lower St James Street, Newport, PO 30 5HE. The deadline for entries is next Friday, that's the 11th of May, and the very, very best of luck. 
Don't forget, of course, to put your name and contact number on your entry. And that's the way things look across the island this evening. We're back tomorrow from 7. Let's recap tonight's top story. In a week when the Isle of Wight Council is highlighting its efforts to reduce the number of road deaths and injuries on the island, people in Gunville are expressing fears about pedestrian safety after a 12-year-old girl suffered serious injuries in a collision on the main local road this week. There's concern that traffic calming measures introduced as a result of a similar crash seven years ago are only making things worse. That's it from all of us on the team here this evening and from me. Bye-bye.